am coming to you with a video today on using mixed media and also with using tissue. So I'm going to start off first with saying I am using the fluid watercolor paper because we're going to have a bunch of um, moisture on our page today and this has a 140 pound weight. So I am going to rip out a sheet of our paper. And you can just feel the thickness on this, which works amazing when you're doing a lot of uh, moistures and liquids and whatnot. So the first thing I'm going to do on this page is probably, normally I would gesso, but I am actually going to start off with attaching our, our uh, what am I trying to say here, our tissue. So. I am going to use a bunch of different tissues and I will show you some of the tissues I'm using. I'm using this one here which is just a bunch of script. This one here which is Stamperia. So I'll take out of the package. I'll show you that one. And I'm also using some of Dina Wakely's new tissue, her collage paper. So this one's pretty awesome too. And this one's called Just Words. You can do so many different things with tissue. Tissue's a lot of fun to play with. One thing I was going to show you too that you can do with tissue, if you haven't done it before, is you can take it apart and manipulate it a little bit with water. So I'm going to put my paintbrush into water and just show you how you can do that. If you just get your tissue wet, I'll show you. I might not have it wet enough. Anyways, it just comes apart right like that. You can rip it. That is also another one. Um, but with this, it kind of just loosens the fibers. See now I'm tearing it because I'm not having the water there. So you can see the difference, right? I'll show you. This is the tear. This is with water. So it's just a completely different look. So besides that, I am also going to be ripping out today some uh, sheets and different images and whatnot from Dina Wakely's Collage Collective books. I have the volume one and the volume two. So we'll have a look at that. And there's just some sheets of papers and different things that we're gonna use as well. So um, another thing you can use as well, if you're not totally into the tissue, you can get an old book. And I tend to get old books from, you know, secondhand stores and whatnot. Rip those apart. So you can use those. You can even take out images and use images that are in these old books. So those are some ideas, as well as using napkins uh, and taking napkins apart because there's so many different images on napkins. But that is a whole other video that I will show you. So we're going to get started. And I'm going to show you how we adhere, or how I adhere anyways, some of our tissue. And one thing I like to use, and I think it's awesome stuff, is Dina Wakely's Medium. It's uh, the gel medium, and it's a soft gel matte medium. And I really like it. I think it goes on nicely. So we're going to put some of that awesomeness. Actually, I'll grab a different brush. I'm going to grab that brush. So you could also use Mod Podge or something thin like that, something thinner. I find this is one of the thinner uh, mediums to put on that doesn't see through or add bumps and lumps. I really like this one. So, that's probably good enough for now. And you can put this wherever you want. We're also going to be adding some stamps and I put on a full sheet 
you don't have to you can rip it apart and use bits and pieces I did because I'm gonna have other elements of tissue on this page so that isn't a big deal to me plus when we're finally done you're only gonna see bits and pieces come through the paint so it's not a huge deal okay so that tissue we took apart from Dina Wakely I'm gonna pop that on there Okay, up here in the corner and I'm going to put it off the page because eventually I'm going to cut it. So that's why I did that like that. And in Stamparia, I'm going to actually cut this. So I'm eventually going to use that image on something else, but right now I just want to use the writing and the font around the image. So, remember you can do whatever you want. There's no right or wrong. These are just some ideas and some kind of tips and techniques of the different things I do. So, anything really goes. So now I'm just gonna rip. Okay. This is a, just kind of a rough, edged piece there's a uh, it's not kind of flowy whatsoever but that's okay I'm just gonna put that down in here and this little piece you can do whatever you want it's so fun to sometimes just play around and get some different ideas. Anything goes. All right. This one I know is upside down, but we're not actually going to be able to read it anyway, so that's okay. If you want to put it right side up and all your things, that's okay too. But this is just kind of to give it some background, I guess. All right. And we're going to put some of this in there. And like I said, we are going to uh, be stamping some fonts and things in here as well. So that'll give us some other fonts and whatnot, other than just what we're doing here. So I'm going to put that one in there. All right, so I'm gonna give that a second to dry. So now, let that dry a little bit. I've pulled out my stamp and I'm just using Finnebar stamp. And this one is, it's from Prima. And I'm just seeing if there's a name because I'm sure I'll be asked. I do not see a name. So I, once I find out the name, we'll put that in the description. But it's just a font stamp. And I'm using my black soot Distress Ink from Tim Holtz. Okay, so, and we're just going to lightly tack some font uh, down here. You don't want anything too drastic or severe and you don't want it too dark. Because we're just trying to add some depth to this, nothing too severe. Okay, so you can put that however you want. There, so that's probably good enough. 
for that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is look into my Dina Weekly books. And we can get some images to play around with this. And what I'm probably going to do is a fall layout. So I kind of like to have colors in that color, that color pattern. Um, let's see. See if there's anything that floats out at us. There's so many awesome things in this book. This is a fairly new book. This came out in the spring of this year. So it's a, it's a nice one. I really like Dina Wakeley's colors and her choices on here. So, you know, I'm kind of liking that. I'm going to take out that one, I think. So that is an option. And then this one, because these are full pages. This book, the volume two, is also full pages, but it's a little bit different color schemes as well. That's kind of nice too. And you can even do that in halves with the, de the design that's there. So I really like that look. So there's just different, different things that you can play around with and use. So, I think I'm going to go for kind of this idea. So now I'm going to pull out our paints and I am using today um, the Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylics and we are going to pull out some colors. These might not be all the colors I do use but I'm pulling out some colors that would be in the color palette I'm thinking of. We'll see. We'll play around. We'll get some ideas. So those are some of the colors I'm thinking we might be choosing from. Another thing that we're going to do, once we get our color down, we're also going to use some gesso with some stencils. So we're going to have a whole smorgasbord of stuff going on with this layout. So I know a lot of people like to use two page layouts. I'm a one page layout kind of gal. Um, sometimes I do two page, but those are primarily for when I'm designing for the store, but you could do that with this layout. So I am going to start on this layout. Um, I think probably with somewhat of a base color and I'm just trying to think what we should do for that base color. Um, hmm. Also, for those of you, this is also a great help, uh, tip if you use the Paper Artsy paints. It shows the opacity and how translucent they are. So you can use, so you know if you can see through it or not. So always look at that front little area. It is a great indicator. So you know um, which paints would be best for which layer you're doing. Well, I've decided I'm gonna do my background in Snowflake and you can see opaqueness see which one you want to do there I am just going to do some doubles on here and I'm going to move that around with my paintbrush so you could do that um, on your craft mat or your glass mat or whatever you want to use but this is a watercolor page, so with the, the weight on this, you should be fine. And I really didn't use that much paint. So I'm going over our tissue and our stamps. Um, some of our stamps might move a little bit. Um, you could have done an archival ink. I didn't care so much if they moved around a little bit because I'm not wanting to read them, right? It's just there for some depth. So I'm going to add some more paint. Love to know in the comments how many of you do mixed media? Because I'm finding a lot of people who've been scrapbooking for as long as I have and whatnot 
are starting to make the move over into mixed media for something different. A lot of people have been scrapbooking a long time and maybe scrapbooked all those pictures that they don't have a lot of pictures left, which is, you know, sometimes my case. But I also, um, I'm an art kid, that's what I did in school. So art is my thing. So this is no different than anything I pretty much did before. So, but I really like to just go back to it because I don't always want to do things with pictures. This one I will be adding some pictures, but you don't have to. That's what's nice about art journals because you don't have to do that. Okay, so there is our base. There's our white background. So we're gonna leave that like that for just a second. And the one nice thing about these paints is they dry very fast. So I am now going to copy a little bit of that, but you don't have to. Um, one nice thing you could do on here too is use some watercolors, which actually I'm going to tell you, once I do the gesso in our stamp or our our stencil, um, or our model, sorry, I keep saying gesso, our modeling paste, I am going to use watercolors with that. So we're gonna use a whole bunch of different types of paints and mediums with uh, this layout. Okay, so I pulled out this color and this one is a nice fall color. It's butternut, it's very pretty. So I'm just gonna put this in some areas around our page. Oh, got a little bit of butternut in here. And then I am going to pull out, I always shake these really, really well. This color is called Coral. So this is gonna be a little bit brighter on our palette. You can always mute these a little bit as well. You can mix them with other colors. There's so many different things you could do. This one I mixed a little bit with the butternut. You got a little bit of water if you wanted to. So it's a nice pretty fall color. I'm gonna do a layout with leaves. So um, in my trip that I just came back from, which was all the countryside and the mountains here in Alberta. And uh, the leaves were changing colors and it was absolutely gorgeous. So, um, next color I'm going to use. I didn't want any really bright colors, but it's really hard not to do that, to be honest. Uh, the next color I'm going to use, I have so many different shades of yellow. Um, let's give it a little shake, is Haystack. So I think that's probably good. Once I get the colors on here, you start to see that certain colors you pulled don't necessarily work. So these colors work a little bit better. So this one, I'm gonna do that. Oh yeah, that looks awesome together. Look how awesome that looks together. I love that, that's awesome. Now I'm saying awesome a lot. I tend to see I do that in my videos, that's where you'll notice that too. Can't make fun of yourself, who can you make fun of, right? There we go, so I'm liking that. That looks great. So now what I'm going to do is this is where we get into some fun elements too. I am going to use modeling paste. I tend to use this one a lot. I really like it. It's from uh, Finnabar, which is put out by Prima. I'm going to grab a little putty knife and our hotel credit cards or room card, which you don't get a lot of those now because a lot of people aren't traveling. But anyways, if you do get them, always save them because they come in handy and we are going to put a stencil 
So I think I'm going to use a Tim Holtz stencil today. And we don't need anything super dynamic. Um, actually, this one might be kind of nice. Yeah, I'm kind of digging that one. I think I'm going to use that one. So we are going to use this one. There's no name on it, so it's but it's the one that looks like bricks. So we are going to do some modeling paste with this guy. All right, so. crack open another container soon running low all right so here um, actually you know what I think I'm gonna do it mm hmm maybe in here should we do it right there all right so For those of you who haven't used modeling paste, it's the bomb diggity, I tell you. I love it. It gives a raised edge to, um, well, putting it in a stencil does gives a raised edge. And then I like to go over it with different paints or whatnot. With this, you don't want to get too close to the edge because then you're going to have a defined line and that's not what I want that's where the stencil ends. So try and stay somewhat in the middle. And I'll show you another little technique as well once we take this off. This stuff says seems to, I think anyways, dry pretty fast as long as you don't have it too thick take off the extra so there's that I'll show you I don't really need it right now but I will show you how you grab your card and you can just go like that and you can also maneuver it around see you get your extra and then you just put it back in there so there's that okay so now I'm going to remove our stencil and put in our pile of stuff to wash. Now what I like to do with this, and you can, you can use, I usually use my putty knife, but you can use this, is I tend to go around the edge of where our modeling paste is and just lower the level so you don't have any areas that are standing up because it'll be very noticeable on your layouts. You want to kind of tack it down a little bit. And this is what I tend to do. So it doesn't raise. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so there's that. And right. We are going to go in and add some of our colors. And one thing I'm going to do is add some watercolors. I'm going to show you two different ways we can do watercolors. First way is we're just going to add some color here. Get my brush ready. Like to add lots of water. Lots of pigment in here. All right, so I'm just going to add some color in here. And I mean, really, with this. You can do a few different things. You could do acrylics, you could do watercolors, you could do whatever you wanted to. There's really 
no right or wrong. It just really depends on what you want to do. With the watercolor, I'm putting the watercolor in here because I'd like to see some of what we have underneath. And uh, I will show you what we're going to do later. It might not make sense now, but uh, hopefully it'll make sense in a bit. So I'm getting in some of my fall colors, which I'm going to use some reds, yellows, oranges, maybe some green. So that's what we're doing here. And these are just regular watercolors. These ones I got from Michaels. You use just your watercolor, um, or just a paintbrush and some water, really not a whole lot to this so I'm just making some circles in different color so like I said watercolors are so see-through so I'm not talking a lot while I'm doing this just letting you see what I'm doing rather than talk your ear off. So, I'm going to put like a red, almost an outline on here. Grab some more of my water and I'm going to do it like that. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with this. I don't know if I've got it wet enough on here that it will do what I'm going to try to accomplish, but I will show you what I'm trying to do. We will see. I kind of like to do a little of a drip drop effect, so I'm going to see if this will work. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It is in a few areas, so give it a little tap. color to start lining down our page. See? Okay, so I'm going to leave that like that and I'm just going to grab a tissue and pick up some of this because I just want to have like a little bit of the lines on there. Okay, so like I was saying before, this was one area where you could do watercolor. Just with the watercolor paints that you purchase and with a paintbrush. This is another, and I don't know if you've seen these or not, but these are called Peerless, and they are paper watercolors. So with these, you would need a watercolor brush. You can buy in your local arts and crafts store. And with these, you take the paper, that's all pigment on this paper, your water brush, circle around, just give it a little squeeze to get the pigment on your brush, and you could go like so. So see that color goes on there. So these again are also watercolor. So it's kind of a neat idea of something you can do. So I'm gonna continue on with this way and show you what we come up with. So I'm going to do more videos with watercolor painting in the future, but for now this is what we're looking at. So with this one, I'm going to do, actually I'm going to grab a different brush, and we're going to grab some of that green. Okay, so I'm going to put green on our stencil, the bricks that we had there. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this. And I'm trying not to make a sludge or some ugly color, but it's very easy to do if you're not careful. 
So So you can start to see that stencil come through in the cracks and crevices of the paint. A little darker green in here. It's trying to come through. In other videos you see me do a uh, water drip technique with this. With this one, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get in lots of that pigment in there just so it shows up. I kind of want to do a little bit of an ombre effect, not necessarily a ton. So there's that. Then I'm going to start having this go into yellow tones. So I'm going to pick a different color of yellow. And I am using the same color brush, or the same brush I just used on the green. Because if it meshes a little bit, it's not the end of the world, because like I said, I'm kind of going a little bit ombre-like. Hopefully you can see that. And that's moving down into there. I love all the bright colors. I love bright color anything. I'm a bright color kind of gal. I'm not into the muted and the and you know the base colors, neutral colors. I love bright. Okay, so with this orange, love the orange. So vibrant. We are going to put this on this side. We can blend that a little bit, but obviously orange doesn't really blend with green, but that's what we're doing down here. And I like the look of that. Just to add some color, because some of this will be covered up by the picture we choose, because our Matte will be over in this area to some degree. Okay, so I am now going to take some of my red and mix it with some of my orange just to give it a vibrant pop of color. And we are going to put this over top of our orange because I want something a little bit more bold. that. I'm going to grab a different brush and I'm going to make my yellow up here a little bit more bold as well. So by saying more bold that means less water. So I like the look of that. Yeah, that's kind of the look I'm going for. All right, so there's that look. So then on top of that, I am going to add some yellow in here. I'm gonna blot it like that because I wanna have a drip effect. I'm going to have a big drip effect on this one. Okay, so now I'm going to tilt it and see if it drips. It's starting to come down. starting to come down. We can always add some more. Yeah, 
Yeah, see it's coming down slowly. We are also going to add some ink to this as well. Some distress ink. We're gonna play this up and we're gonna have some, some stamps. We're putting a whole bunch of different mixed media on this layout. Okay, so there's that. We're just gonna let that dry for a second. Okay, so as that's still drying, I am taking some of our chalk paint and this one is cherry red. I'm gonna just put it on my craft mat here. And this one here, I'm just going to make some streaks with it, so. Like so. Okay, and that might not make much sense right now, but down the road it will. So we're just gonna let that dry, and in the interim, I'm going to grab out some stamps. So we are going to use our archival ink with some stamps. And we're going to put some stamps down and we might add a little bit more paint, we will see. So I think what we're going to use, I'm just looking at some of this. Here's some different things we can use. I really like this stamp here. It's really pretty, or the butterflies. Those are all from Tim Holtz. And those are on Nature's Discover. Um, we are going to add some writing. This is Dina Wakely Media on scribbled text elements. And here's also some butterflies from Dina Wakely as well. And these ones are on the scribbly small flowers and insects. So we're gonna add some of those on. Just gonna put those on our block. So put those on our craft block there, or our acrylic block. And we're going to ink this baby up. So, I'm going to put some in here. These ones are very, very faint, and I kind of want them faint. Okay, so that one is a little bit brighter. Okay, and now we are going to add this as well. This one's going on a different acrylic block. We get our larger one and add lots of ink to that. And links to all of these items will be in the description as well. If you're looking to try and find items or you want to know what the name of something is, they will be there as well. So I am going to put this down over yonder. Yeah, I like that. Looks very, very cool. So we're gonna have that there. And I think I'm done with that one. Now I'm going to add some butterflies from the Tim Holtz because they're a little bit different than the ones we had from Dana Weekly. So Put those on there. There's two there. They're very pretty. Ink that up. I want a little bit more ink on these ones. And these ones I am going to put like so. There, so we have some butterflies in there. 
We can always go back after and add more butterflies, but for now, that's what we have. Okay. Now we are going to take our distress ink and we're going to ink around the sides and add some color in there. And let's see what colors we should use. I am thinking, I love this color, it's a favorite of mine, but Tim Holtz says fossilized amber is a favorite. So we're going to get out that and we will get out our blending tool and I just recently used this so I already have my foam on it. We're going to ink up our pad our foam blending tool and we are going to ink around here. Remember you just have to be careful in this area because we're going to trim off that tissue, the extra. You can go in a little bit if you want, you don't have to just do that area. I'm going to give this a lot of color, right? A lot of depth, lots of dimension. You can do as much or as little as you want. It looks very funky and cool. If you wanted to go through or do a brown on the outside edges, you could, and we could even do that after. So there's that, so look how cool that looks. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Posca pin and uh, you could use whichever one you wanted to. Um, there's all different kinds of pins you could use actually. You don't just have to use Posca. Personally, I kind of like the Posca. So, they're awesome. So here I am just actually going to make some doodaddy squirrels. Squirrels and squiggles. And it's like that. Here I'm going to do a little bit around our butterfly. And again, you're not trying to go for perfect. So that's my look for that. Alrighty. And you can do other little squirrel, squ I always say squirrels, but it's like little designs. You could leave some of these out and just leave the color in, or you could do these. It's totally up to you. So that's my version of the sun. There's just so many different things you could do. And once you get on your picture or your mat, you can do different elements there as well. So I'll show you that. The next thing I'm going to do is our squigglies. And this is with the Dina Wakely stamp. So there's that. So I'm going to get out my archival ink again. And I'm going to do this like so. Just a little bit off. So you have still a little bit of that there. And it's always good to sometimes do things in threes and I'll do one down there. Okay, so there's that. Just to give you a rough idea you don't have to do this, but it will just give you kind of a little bit of an idea. Um, for a, a frame or a mask or a border, we will show you what that would look like. Just one second. So this will just give you an idea. I'm not going to use gold, but I mean you could if you wanted to, but this will give you an idea for matting. So you could do something in here. You could do something here, even cover up that butterfly. You could put little pictures in here or in here. 
There's so many different things you could do. You could do white and ink around the outside edges. You could even do black. But this will just give you an idea of diff different things you could do. So that is a little bit of our layout. And we're incorporating different elements into mixed media. This might be busy for some, for others, not so much. I can show you a picture on here to give you a rough idea of what that might look like. But at the same time, you could do whatever you wanted to. Um, you could just, yeah, add a big picture even. You could put like a five by seven, an eight by 10, um, you know, whatever, like, it is whatever you want it to be. If you wanted to add more, you could. I personally wouldn't. But um, yeah, this is just an idea into a little bit of different things you can do with mixed media. You can put more or do less. So I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe and like this feed and uh, watch our other videos. And if you have any suggestions, let us know. Have a great day and thanks for watching.